Hey everyone, this morning we woke up to more rain and heavy fog. The trail ahead was nearly invisible from our camp spot. We packed up and hit the road, aiming to head further north along the west side of Vancouver Island. Our goal was to visit the famous Lonely Dug Tree and then find our next camp spot. Of course, we couldn't resist exploring some dirt roads along the way. Some led to dead ends or gated areas, while others opened up to new places to explore. I mean, I guess we can maybe take it at least up to that first one. Yeah. Unless it gets too, way too narrow. Because I highly doubt anybody lives up here, but. What's that sign? What does that say? Warning. Bridges removed. Bridges removed. Cross dishes, ditches in place. Enter at your own risk. <laughs> All right. We turned off onto a dirt road that led us deep into the forest. With the thick fog and rain, it felt like a scene out of a spooky movie. I'll tell ya, if fairies, gnomes, or even Bigfoot are real, this is where they would be hiding out. The forest floor was dotted with large hollowed out trees, which would make the perfect little homes for them. But despite the eerie atmosphere, we didn't encounter anything unusual. Just some more makeshift shooting ranges. And as much as I wanted to camp here, it just wasn't the right spot for the night.
The trail we were on didn't seem well maintained. The ground was very soft and eventually we came across some downed trees blocking our path from going further. With no room to turn around and the ground way too soft for maneuvering, we had to backtrack the entire way, navigating even through the large washout we crossed earlier. It was a bit unnerving, but Chris handled it like a pro as usual. And that loud noise you heard? That was our metal step scraping a rock. No damage done to the Jeep, thank goodness. We soon decided to try yet another road, which led us up a pretty steep climb into less than ideal weather conditions.
eventually find a potential camp spot way up high and the wind was howling and with the misty rain it just was not ideal for camping it probably would have been a pretty cold evening up there so we decided to continue on eventually our path was blocked by what looked like a cell tower that completely cut off the trail altogether forcing us to turn around we made it to port renfew I hope I'm saying it right, a small community on the south shores of Port San Juan with a population of just 262 people. It's known as the tall tree capital of Canada and the drive through the towering trees is breathtaking. It looks like the area is being well developed with new homes and vacation rentals popping up. But we were on the hunt for fuel and didn't find anything, so we had to backtrack to the start of town where we found a fuel station and a visitor center. We did visit the visitor center for a bit, which had some great information. The people working inside were local and gave us some insights on some ways to go and also provided maps and other highlighted information. Next, we made our way to the trail for the Lonely Dug. The trail itself is pretty easy, though it alternates between dirt and pavement with plenty of potholes to watch out for. We came upon this beautiful bridge high above the valley and just stopped and soaked in the peaceful views. The water was gorgeous, the birds were chirping, and it was just a moment of just peace and quiet.
As you get closer to the Lonely Dug, the trail does get rougher, with large washouts and a pretty steep, rocky incline. There's a parking lot, kinda, for non-off-road vehicles, so they can park there and then hike to the trail to the tree. The Lonely Dog is an enormous Coast Douglas fir located in the Gordon River Valley. It is the second largest Douglas fir in Canada after the Red Creek fir which was seeded around 1000 CE. We should have looked up where this Red Creek fir was because we weren't very far from it and it would have been pretty cool to go see it as well if we could. But this giant tree stands 230 feet tall with a circumference of 39 feet and a diameter of 12 feet. It's awe-inspiring. What's up everybody? We just got done driving the Lonely Dog Trail, which really was not very hard until the very end to get up to the actual trail that leads you to the Lonely Dog. Um, you're not getting up there without at least four wheel drive. And uh, you might have to use four wheel low. I just used four wheel high and it went right up, but... We'll see how it goes down. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be rough going down. There are definitely some pretty big craters in that little hill coming up. But the walk down was steep. Fairly easy. Mm. It's not too difficult. Like, it's difficult. It can be a little slippery because it's wet up here. But it only took 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes to walk down there. Half a mile. Yeah, I don't even know if it's a half. Tomorrow, but. but there's lots of mosquitoes. Yeah, there's mosquitoes, but we're in the middle of a forest, so yeah, it's what you said. Effect, but now it's done. onward to the trail. We'll see how he created it, how good it is. Yeah, and hopefully find a camp spot <laughs> soon because it's yeah, getting we gotta late. Find a camp spot, and hopefully, the trail does not bite us in the boot. Yeah, in the boot. Here we go. Don't let Chris fool you. That hike back up was no walk in the park. 
it's pretty steep and as you can tell I was out of breath for sure When we hit the trail that Chris had found before we left for this trip, I should have kept the cameras rolling because you never know what you're going to encounter in these forests. We came across a man riding a bicycle with no shoes, right up here on the mountain on the dirt trail. And not long after that, we spotted this random truck parked in the middle of the trail and we couldn't see anybody else around. Unfortunately, this trail didn't lead to much. We found more blocked off paths, landslides with massive boulders, and hardly really nothing available camping wise. This was the end of the trail for us. Chris thought we could continue, but I was weary of sliding into that boulder there on the driver's side. Especially with no decent camp spots found along the way, it just didn't seem worth the risk. So we turned around and followed the Gordon River, hoping to find a place to camp. We passed a few spots, but they were already taken. And eventually we climbed up another forest service road and found a rocky spot on a cliff. We were tired and a bit defeated, so we never turned the camera on or even took a picture of the spot. We were high above the river on a cliff in the forest in this little clearing of um, pretty large jagged rocks. And it was pretty beautiful, but the bugs were terrible. Mosquitoes at night. And then in the morning, we had these tiny little black flies where if they weren't swarming you and everything you were trying to do in the Jeep, they were biting any inch of skin that they could find on me. So we packed up camp pretty quickly and got out to make our way for the next day's adventures. We hope you've enjoyed our adventure so far. In our next episode, we finally find some well-deserved sunshine, and at this point, we were begging for it, and tranquility by a beautiful riverside spot. If you want to see more of our overlanding journey on Vancouver Island and beyond, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to like this video and check out our other videos and hit that notification bell so you know when the next episode drops. Mm -hmm.